through 16. It says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, drinking and eating, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. I want you to remember that. The laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. And whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Cherazin, and woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. I'm going to be reading just scripture. Okay? I might put in a little points, but this is scripture. Okay, then I want you to go to John 15, 21 through 24. John chapter 15, 21 through 24. Everybody got it? Yep. Okay, it says, But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no sin, no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin, but now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law, they hated me without a clause. But when I, the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, and the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Okay. John, I'm sorry, John 14, 21 through 24. That's okay, I want us to read that too. <clears throat> He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will obey, will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and will come to him, and make our home with him. He who does not love me, does not keep my words, 
and the words which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Okay, then I want you to go to Zechariah 5. Okay. So we need to be keeping his words if we really love him. Don't you feel like that, women, when your husband's? It's like, if you would really love me, you would hear me, you would listen when I tell you I need things, or I do. Right? Okay, Zechariah 5. Starting in verse 1 through 4. Then I turned and raised my eyes and saw there a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? So I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits and its width 10 cubits. Then he said to me, this is the curse that goes over the whole face of the earth. Oh, this is the curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. Every thief shall be expelled according to this side of the scroll, and every perjurer shall be expelled according to that side of it. I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name. That's what perjury is lying. It shall remain in the midst of this house and consume it with its timbers and stones. So as there is a curse for lying and, and um, stealing. Okay. And then in Malachi chapter 2, Zechariah and Malachi. Oh, Chapter 2, Malachi, starting in verse 17. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, In what way have we wearied him? In that you say, everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delights in them, or where is the God of justice? So we can't just keep saying that everything, that God just loves everybody, because he does, but not when they're doing evil. He still loves them, but he doesn't like what they're doing. Then in Zachar Malachi 3, 1 through 18, and I'm preaching on this because the Lord showed me if you're not doing it, then you really don't have faith. If you want your faith to increase, you need to be doing this. And he showed me this because he gave me a dream. And in the dream, it was like everybody was supposed to be paying our salary. And I was like, they were giving it to other people. They were giving it to other things. And I said, no, what is going on here, Lord? And he said, people are stealing in the church. They are stealing your salary that is supposed to be coming here. The tithes is your income from me. And you're making them look bad when you steal and take it and pay. Now, I'm not saying it could be somebody online, on the computer, that's going to watch the video. But he is saying that there has been some stealing done in his church, not just this church, churches all around. And people are wondering why they're not blessed and wondering why they're cursed. In Malachi, he says, if you steal, you're a thief. If you're a thief, you're under the curse. Listen to this in Malachi chapter 3. He said, Behold, I send my messenger. And he, wait, is it Malachi 3, 1 through 18? Yes. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah in Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the former years, and I will come near you for judgment, and I will be swift witnesses, 
Listen to what he's against. Against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, which is liars, and against those, listen, who exploit, means take advantage of, those who exploit the wage earner. Now what did he say in Luke, when he said go into the world with the laborers? Do you know why a lot of people leave the ministry? Because people are not obedient to God. And then the people are complaining the economy's bad and this is bad, and they're not blessed because they're not. They're not tithing, they're not giving seed offerings, they're not giving offerings, and you're only hurting yourself. I don't care if you do it or not, because God's going to take care of us. He always does. But I've learned it myself, and I'm telling you, because if you want to be blessed, if you want to get out of debt, your faith is shown by what you do. If you think God's not going to come through with you, for you, for your bills, how's he going to come through for you to take you up to heaven? Why do you think he uses money or other things? Because if you put it before him, you don't trust him really. He said, against those who exploit wage earners. He didn't say welfare people. He didn't. He says wage earners. Widows. Widows is somebody whose husband or wife have passed away. Orphans. Orphan is somebody who has no mother and no father. Okay? Against those who exploit the wage earners, the widows, the orphans, and against those who turn away an alien. Because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. See, you don't fear God. If you feared God, you would do what he says. He says, if you do what I say, you love me. If you're not doing what he says, you really don't love him. Or you're very weak in your faith. And I'm sorry, but most of us here, there's a few that are new. Most of us here have been saved for at least five years, raising him. Okay? So we're not babies, right? We should be grown up by now and know this. And if you don't know it, it's good to learn it. Because I've taught my kids to tie and give since they were babies. Since they were little, they've done it. And they still do. And it's a good thing because if you want your kid blessed, that's what you got to do. And I'll give you an example. Okay? I, w I got a thing in the mail from my ministry. And it said about sowing seed. And I said, well, I haven't sowed seed in a while. Let me... And he said, God will provide seed to the sower. If he doesn't provide it, he knows you're not going to sow it. He said he provides seed to the sower. And I already told Susan this one. So I said, okay, Lord. And he said, pray about an amount. So I said, okay, I don't, I'll pray about the, So I felt $30. I said, you, you send $30 from some source today, and I will sow it. And Because I had no money at all, nothing for myself even. So I said, I don't have a seed. So I said, I'll sow that seed. And just before I went to bed, I went to take my apron off. And in my pocket of my apron was a wad. I thought it was receipts. Because there was a check in there. You know how they give you the check back sometimes at Walmart. So I just thought it was receipts in the old check. And that pocket was a check that Zach had given me back in May. And a wad of cash. So see, God provided. So I'm so excited. I'm like, so I sent that seed out. But he will provide. Plus it was extra for me. Because I said, I, I prayed about He said, pray about him out. So I said, $30. If you send money, I will send $30. And he provided it. So there was $30 to send as a seed. Plus he had some extra money for me. Because I had no money left. So God is faithful. We get so busy, we forget. And sometimes it have, you have to be like those lepers. What do we got to lose? We ain't got enough for our bills anyways. We must trust God. Right? I always do that. We just got to pay our bills and then trust God for the rest. And he'll give you favor with those who you owe. He said, so, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans, against those who turn away an alien, because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. See, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. For I am the Lord, and I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way shall we return? See, I remember years ago when we were really struggling, and we were tired of what we were just getting by. And I said, Lord, what is going on? I'm tithing, I'm doing everything, what is going on? And this is, and he's, I'll, I'll show you this scripture. He said, will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, in what way have we robbed you? So I was like, I was tithing. He said, in tithes and then and offerings jumped out at me. 
I was tired, but I was so broke, I wasn't given extra. He said, you have brought me in tithes and offerings. See, if you only tithe, you never gave anything to God because tithe belongs to God. And when you keep it, you are stealing. And I don't care if anybody hates me after this message. I am shaking because God told me to do this. And I am doing it. And I don't care if you don't like me after. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to obey God. Okay? I don't care because God always provides for me. But he'll send money in my apron if he can, wants to. But he says, in tithes and offerings. And I was like, oh my God. We were so broke. We haven't, we haven't done nothing extra like we used to back in those in those days. So, you know, of course now we do. But back then we were so. We were, that was before Ralph was working. We were living by faith, and it just got so tight. We stopped giving extra offerings. So now I've been sowing seeds, and God has been blessing. But if I don't teach you it, you're not going to get blessed. And I want everyone here blessed. Don't you want to be blessed? How many here are struggling right now? Raise your hand. Okay, we don't need to be struggling. And I, I'm not saying you're not tithing, but God is, is teaching us. Maybe we need to start sowing seeds or offerings extra. Pray about it and ask God what he wants you to do. But he says, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's another thing. It goes, the tithe goes into the storehouse. If you're watching from the uh, YouTube or TV, if you have a local church, your tithe goes to that church, not to other ministries, not to people you think need it. The church is supposed to get the glory for helping people, not people. Yeah, you can give those extra things and help people, but your tithe go to your local church and your offerings. If you want to give extra offerings to other ministries, that's between you and God. That's good to bless and send mission. That's like missionary offerings, helping to spread the gospel. But your tithes goes to your local church. Because there's another scripture where it says everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. That's my follow of God. If you're doing what's right in your own eyes, then Jesus is not really your king. Like he said, Jesus, you are my king. A king is someone that you listen to. He has control over you. If you're doing what you want to do, First of all, your faith is getting low. You're not trusting, and you're making yourself Lord. And I'm not saying there was no. Maybe we all need a reminder. I know I did when that letter came in for the seed offerings. I haven't sowed a seed in a while. I was doing offerings, but I would sow seed in other ministries in a while because I just been, it's just been hectic. So, but sometimes we all need to shape, shape up a little bit and be reminded. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, do you think he's lying when he said that? God is not a man that he should lie. If he said you try him and see, he will not pour out a blessing Sometimes you might not see it right away, but he'll, get, he'll give you that blessing. You just got to trust him. How many know faith is trust? Amen. We need to trust. We can't run around scared and fearful and fear of man because it's not just about the money. It's about the favor. We need that favor from God. Favor with our bill collectors. Favor with our friends. Favor with our family. Favor with our boss. If you have favor in your job, you know, you get promoted. Favor with, if you, if you have a business, favor with your customers. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know what the devourer is? Like, things that you normally have that wouldn't normally last that long will last. People say to me, oh, well, that, that's a piece of chunk and it's cheap. No, it doesn't matter, because you're probably not tithing. If you buy something, it's going to last if you're a tither, because God's going to rebuke the devourer, devourer. And if it does break down, God will provide the parts. Right? Because this is a real world we're living in. But he will provide either way. He'll eat car quest open on Sunday. Right. Amen. The rust that rusts, the moth that eats, and the thief that breaks in steals. That's right. So just trust the Lord. He says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. If you're gardening, he won't destroy that fruit or the seed that you planted. If you plant tomatoes, you're going to get tomatoes. If you plant tomato seeds, you're going to get tomatoes. If 
you plant cucumber seeds, you're going to get cucumbers. So whatever you plant is what you're going to get. If you plant being generous to someone, you're going to get it back. If you plant being mean to someone, it's going to come back. See, everything is a seed. Jesus, people don't believe Jesus cursed. He cursed that fig tree because it wasn't producing any fruit. And, and it was dead, cursed and dead the next day. God wants to see our fruit. So he said, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to be a fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked as mourners? So you can whine and cry about everything, but if you're not being obedient, you're hurting yourself. How many know we are our worst enemies sometimes? We can hold unforgiveness to ourselves worse than anybody else. We can, we can just do stupid things because of fear. We have to get over that. I'm doing this now. I'm not, I'm not shaking as bad as I was, but I'm shaking because it's not a nice message to have to preach, but it's a good one because if you want to grow up in Christ and you want to be blessed, then you need to do what God says. So, before the Lord of hosts, so now we call the proud blessed, for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Then those who fear the Lord, if you fear the Lord, you're going to obey Him, you're going to do His commands, you're going to fear God more than man, you're going to feel God, fear God more than your bill collectors, more than your houses and loans and money and cars and clothes. So people, ah, I can have new shoes, I can have new clothes, and they take money from God's house. And then when they need things, everybody comes to the house of God and we don't have it to help them. So people don't realize it's hurting themselves. Even though it's a hard message, we all need to hear it. Everyone who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him, for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I make them my jewels, and I will spear them as a man spears his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteousness and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. Next I want you to go to Hebrews 12, starting in verse 5. Some people don't believe in tithing. They think, well, that's Old Testament. Well, it isn't because Michal said that. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek before the law was made. And Jesus said he came to do away with the law of sin and death, not the law. He came to fulfill the law, if you read your Bible. We're not going to be stoned and killed. And you'll still be saved if you give your heart to the Lord, but you're going to live a miserable life. You're not going to have a blessed life. And Jesus said, give us this, he said in his prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, when his king, kingdom is in you, and you make him Lord of your life, then his will can be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Not just in heaven, on this earth as it is in heaven. What's his will? For us to be blessed. Not just blessed and healthy. That's what blessing is. It's healthy in your physical body, in your financial, in your relationships, in your love. Okay? On earth as it is in heaven. Not just in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Don't be tempted. We gotta be praying. Lead us not into that temptation to spend when you can't. Because God will bless you. You're missing out on the blessings by taking from the Lord. I'm just telling you. I don't know if it's for someone here Someone there, we've all been there where we've been tempted. But you know what? It's a lot. If you fear God, you know that He's going to get it out of you some way or another, and it'll come in other ways. But to deliver us from temptation, deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And what is evil? Poverty, sickness, 
Those are all curses. If people think poverty is not a curse, then you go over in Africa and you look at those kids that are starving. You go in America and see people that are starving. Okay? Poverty is a curse. What's the opposite of poverty? Prosperity. People get mad, they don't want to hear about prosperity. Well, I'm sorry, then you're really not a Christian. Okay, we're not talking about taking advantage. We're talking about prosperity. The opposite of prosperity is curse. Is poverty and curse. So you want to prosper in your relationships. You want to prosper. In your, you want your children to prosper. How many would love to see their children prosper? Be healthy. Be happy financial. I'm not talking about you don't have to be Bill Gates and be a millionaire. But you don't want to have to starve. And you want your kids to have school clothes when they need clothes. You don't want them to have to go begging for coats. And begging for stuff. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 12. Starting in verse 12. Five. Five to eleven. And you have forgotten the exhortation. No. Nope. No. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. See, when God loves you, he's going to discipline you. Because he wants to see you do the right thing. Parents, we need to do that with, <coughs> with our kids. You can't just give your kids everything you want. Because when you love them, you're going to discipline them. Excuse me. <coughs> so he says, don't despise the chastening. Chastening is dis disciplining of the Lord nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. Scourges is like spanking. You ever, <laughs> I'm not gonna go say nothing. I'll, I'll give a short testimony with my older son. I won't say his name because it's gonna be on YouTube. Went out one night and we had a curfew that he had to be home by. He's not living home now, so my older one's gonna matter now. But he came home in that late, like, way past that time. So I asked him in the morning. When he came down, I said, I'll deal with him in the morning. And I told him, I said, you knew your curfew and you came in later, and I want to know why. And he was like, give me all these excuses, you couldn't get a ride, and I said, I don't care, then you don't go. And I knew he was lying. This was before he got born again. Uh, he went through some stage or whatever, but anyways. So I said to the Lord, I said, if he's lying, you deal with him. Because I'm, I'm, I know he's lying. I said, you deal with him. And as soon as I said that, he went boom, 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 on, down the stairs on his butt. That was what you call Holy Ghost banking. And I said, see, you're lying. He goes, what? I said, I just told God if you were lying for him to deal with you. Do you know he ran upstairs on reading his Bible? I'm not saying that today. Because he knew he couldn't run from God. You know that? I tell his boys that story, and they love it. <laughs> but he's still serving the Lord today, praise God. But see, sometimes God will do that to us. We need to be disciplined. But we can repent and ask for forgiveness. That's the great thing about Jesus. He's there. So if you made mistakes in the past, all it takes is like that song, just reach out. Repent, admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you made mistakes. Ask God to forgive you and ask him to help you. A little tick over here. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? When you hear chasten, it means discipline. But if you are without chastening, okay, if you're not being disciplined, of which all have been come partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. See, that's why it says if a parent really loves a child, they're going to discipline them. If you don't discipline, it's like, I'm not going to go and discipline somebody else's kid. I mean, I'm going to go up to Andrew's kid and tell him what to do. You got it. Or I'm not going to go up to his son and go up there and start yelling at what you guys got to do. It's not my kid, because you're not my kid. See, it's not my place. But if you're my kid, that's Teresa. 
if they're doing something I don't like, I'm going to say something, and if they don't listen, then I'm going to do something like punish them or something. Okay? Because it is my kid, and I love them, and I want them to do right. I want them to grow up and be responsible, loving adults, and have decent jobs, and, and have a good life, and find good mates. She's got a nice boyfriend, she's a good Christian boy. I don't want them to just go find anybody out there and have, I mean, that, that doesn't mean you don't reach people, but the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. Okay? So this is what I'm saying. You need to discipline. If you love, you're going to discipline. That's part of it. You don't want to have to be your kid's friend. They'll be your friend when they're in their late 20s and 30s, and they'll come back and say, boy, I'm glad. I'll, I'll, I'll read you something after. It's called The Meanest Mother in the World. Remind me of it, and I'll read it after. I'm done with this. <clears throat> my mom read it to me, and I read it to my kids. Hallelujah. Okay. So if you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed, for a few days, chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit. See, God chastens you for your benefit. He, he really loves all of us, and I, I want you to understand that. He's not trying to be rude. He's not trying to be... He's trying to help you. Give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Okay? God's system is backwards from the world. Or I should say the world is really backwards. Because the, the world says, take, take, take. But it says, he who gives and has more, and the one who holds back, has less. So it says, number 10, For they indeed for a few days chastened us, and seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Now I'm going to read in Hebrews chapter 11. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 12. Now faith. There we go with the faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. So when you sow or when you tithe, it takes faith. But when you do, you have to trust the things that you don't see God's going to come through with. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In Hebrews chapter 11, again, starting in verse 4 now, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. See, Enoch was raptured. Anybody can be raptured. We don't have to wait for the end of the rapture. When it's your time, you don't have to die. You can be raptured. Enoch did. Enoch was raptured. Well, I'm standing on that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he had pleased God. And Elisha went up in the whirlwind of chariots fire. He, wasn't, he didn't die either. But without faith, listen to me, Verse 6, without faith, I want everybody to say this, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's on our wall right over there. Hebrews 11, 6. 
But without faith, repeat after me, everybody. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. That's another thing too. When I moved to Maine, I didn't know where I was going. I just knew I was coming to Maine, but I didn't know. And God gave me that scripture and I had to leave everything. And I had like, I didn't even have really $30 in my pocket. And I had the rent paid, but I had $30, and I came by faith that I was going to have a job, and I did. I remember it was Larry Waltz who was running the country diner, the old one. And I went there and applied, and he said, you should, I just, you should have came earlier, I just hired someone. And I said, oh, I said, well, that's okay, I'll just pray that God will bless them and something good will happen and they won't need the job. And he just kind of chuckled a little. Because you don't want to curse somebody, but you want to pray that God will bless the person that, so they don't need the job so you can have it. He called me up the next day and goes, I don't know, but her husband went back to work in the building. She said she don't want a job. So, <laughs> praise God. you got to speak good things in your life for yourself and for others. See, it was a blessing for both of us, the girl, whoever it was, and for me. That's what faith is. But if you go there saying, oh, there's nothing there, oh, nobody's going to do this, or this is going to happen to me, that's bad, you're cursing yourself. Start speaking. Faith is, you can have faith for all kinds of negative things. You know, there was a, one person who said, I'm going to die by this time, I know I'm going to die covering my family. He died by that time because he kept speaking it over himself. Start speaking good things, and you will see. If you don't know how, write it down, all the good things I've told them before. Write a list of all the good things and say it over and over until you get it in your head. Because if you've been spoken negative to all those years of you growing up by people or friends, you're going to have those playing tapes in your head, and you need to start speaking positive things. So. To get rid of the old, you've got to put in some new. Okay? <clears throat> and he went out, not knowing where he was going. <clears throat> By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the hearers with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also re received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Do you believe God? Are you trusting him? Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now turn to Hebrews 7, we're almost done, 1 through 5. Hebrews chapter 7, 1 through 5. Okay, Hebrews chapter 7, 1 through 5. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes. See, I told Ralph this morning, I was like, 
We have a commandment to receive tithes. We are commanded. We don't have to think about it. It's our commandment. We need to receive tithes. If we don't, we're disobeying God. He said, and that's in verse 5. He says, And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi who will continue in the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes. This is in Hebrews, New Testament, not old. From the people, according to the law, that in there is, wait, that is from their brethren, to they have come from the loins, for they have come from the loins of Abraham. Isn't that awesome? And then in Genesis 14, 18 through 20. Genesis chapter 14, 18 through 20. Then the Kaldadak, king of Salem, what did I say 14? Yeah. Oh, 18 through 20, okay. Then the Kaldadak, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed to Abram of God most high, possessors of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. Let me see what that. Yeah. So, and then Deuteronomy 28. And I'm going to just give the salvation prayer in case anyone here. I think most of you are, but I do it because we're videotaping this, so if everybody can repeat after me, and the Bible will ask the Lord, if you've never given your heart to the Lord, we're going to do that right now. Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save my soul. Thank you.